Karen is a sales representative of HarperCollins Publishers and has supported the New England bookselling community for over 35 years. She was a recipient of the Saul Gilman Award for Outstanding Service to New England Independent Bookstores and has been recognized as the HarperCollins Sales Rep of the Year on several occasions. She also has served on the board of directors for the book publisher representatives of New England. So needless to say, we are so, so lucky to have her with us today. And I'm going to let you take it away. Karen, tell us about some books. Thanks, Abby. So first up is Julia, Simply Julia, um, a new cookbook from our activist and beloved home cook, Julia Tertian, whom Epicurious named one of the 100 greatest home cooks of all time. Um, this has received great reviews, most recently a New York Times book review that said, it didn't feel as though the recipes were developed in a, in a test kitchen and that the photography wasn't like an overstyled cookbook shoot. Rather, the overall effect is if you're in that friend's house, you loved visiting as a child, the one where the refrigerator was always stopped and the parents told you to call them by their first names. Um, this isn't a, really a summer cookbook, but because of its casual feel, it seems perfect for summer. Uh, it features 110 comfort food recipes with an eye toward healthier eating including chicken, vegetarian, vegan, sugar-free, and gluten-free dishes. Um, the book will also include her signature seven lists throughout, uh, seven things I learned from being a private chef that makes home cooking easier, seven ways to use leftover buttermilk, seven ways to use leftover egg whites or egg yolks, as well as essays, personal photos, and handwritten elements. She's a home cook who writes for home cooks and she's on the cover for the very first time. Lori, if you slip, go to the next page. Um, it has, we have some, there should be a couple pictures from that. Oh, there we go. Um, my manager is a fan and has tried a bunch of these recipes. She's loved everything she's tried and she says she's got another 20 pages of recipes turned down to try. Um, I myself, I'm going to try to make the lemon ricotta cupcakes because lemon makes me feel like the cupcakes will, uh, will kind of be healthy. Um, Tertian is a best-selling author and the co-author of over a dozen cookbooks, including Gwyneth Paltrow's It's All Good. She also hosts the podcast Keep Calm and Cook On, which I plan to listen to because, again, my manager has been raving about this. Um, she has a monthly column in Food and Wine and has written for many national periodicals. And she sits on the Kitchen Cabinet Advisory Board for the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History. Okay. So Cynthia Dupreet Sweeney is the author of the mega best-selling 1.2 million copies uh, sold novel, The Nest. Um, and she's back with an equally wry engaging story. Um, I love The Nest and I love this one just as much. The Nest was a smart, funny look at four siblings and what money has done to their relationships as a long awaited family trust, their nest, uh, is brought into jeopardy by one of the siblings. Good Company is more character driven than, um, than The Nest as it explores the strains and deep bonds that mark long-time marriages and friendships and how they evolve over time. Um, Flora and Margo have been best friends since college. The women and um, Flora's husband, Julian, came up together as students in New York City, scraping to find work in theater and participating in Julian's small, small theater company, um, Good Company. 20 years later, they're all living in LA where Flora is a voice actor, Julian stars in a cop show, and Margot is a longtime superstar on a hit TV show married to a gentle doctor. And they all dote on Ruby, um, Flora, and Julian's daughter. When Ruby is graduating from high school, Flora goes searching for an old photo of the five of them. And in addition to finding the photo, stumbles across an envelope containing her husband's wedding ring, the one he claims he lost one summer when Ruby was five and all their lives are upended. 
this has been out since April, um, and there's been a great, uh, a lot of really great attention for it. It was a read with Jenna pick. It was an editor's choice in the New York Times Book Review. The Washington Post included it in its 20 books to read this summer. A People's Magazine pick, um, USA, USA Today included it in their five books not to miss and the Wall Street Journal included it in their summer reading feature. Um, in 1929, we lost Dorothea Benton Frank. It was a loss for everyone who knew her or read her, and it especially left a heart, a hole in the hearts of her writer friends. The title of the next book she was planning to write was Reunion Beach. She hadn't started it, and uh, it was just an idea in her head, so we couldn't finish it for her or find somebody to, to finish it for us. But her friends were inspired by the title and channeled their creativity, admiration, and grief into stories set in the lush low country of South Carolina. Um, Ellen Hildenbrand dedicated her, her novel, 28 Summers, to Dottie. And in this book, where she brings back the characters from the summer of 69 for a family reunion on Nantucket with life-changing consequences in the story, Summer of 79. I, have, um, I hate to admit this, but I've never read Ellen Hildebrand but the story made me go out and pick up a copy of Summer of 69. Um, Mary Alice Monroe has a beautiful and uplifting story about a birth mother who finally meets the daughter she gave up a long, long time ago. Um, when Beatrice says no to the second marriage proposal from her long, time, her long time beau, and he decides it's time for them to take a break, maybe a permanent one, um, this crisis of the heart brings together four best friends who haven't been together in a few years and changes all four of their lives in um, Patty Callahan's Bridesmaids. Um, Dottie and Pat Conroy keep in touch through postcards that he sends her from heaven until he shows up at the, she shows up at the bar where he's hanging out in um, Adriana Trigiani's piece. There are some essays and some poetry her daughter, Victoria, wrote a, a beautiful tribute to her mother. And as a bonus to her fans, um, we included some essays with recipes that Dottie wrote to them in 2018. Um, Dottie loved RJ Julia and she made it a point to have this store one of her tour stops for almost every book. Um, I hope some of you had an opportunity to meet her here. She was really a, a force of nature. Um, Pam Jenoff is the author of multiple best-selling historical novels. Her reissues are bestsellers and her new original books are blockbusters with combined sales of over a million copies. Her best-selling book so far has been The Lost Girls of Paris, which spent 20 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list. Um, Woman with the Blue Star has been on the New York Times list for the month it's been out and we're hoping for a long run. Um, for this one as well. This new book, um, which is a trade paper original, was inspired by true stories of people who hid from the Nazis in the sewers um, of cities all over Europe. When the Nazis liquidate the ghetto, Sadie and her pregnant mother are forced to seek refuge in the perilous sewers beneath the city. One day, 18-year-old Sadie looks up through a grate and sees a girl about her own age buying flowers. Um, Ella Stefanak, an affluent Polish girl, is living a life of relative ease with her stepmother. Longing for her fiancé, who has gone off to war, Ella wanders Krakow restlessly. Um, while on some errands in the market, she catches a glimpse of Sadie through that grate. Ella decides to help Sadie, and the girls become close, but eventually the war sets their lives on a collision course that will test each of them. Um, the power of their friendship and the strength of the human will to survive. Um, Pam Jenoff always does a ton of research for her novels and this is no exception. We get to learn a lot more about history um, while reading an amazing story. Uh, it's received lots of great reviews with highly recommends coming from the Washington Post, CNN, and Entertainment Weekly. Um, some of you might remember Sue Miller from her classic book, The Good Mother. She returned to the national bestseller list last year with this widely praised book of a couple 
at the end of a long marriage, which was a people and an NPR best book of the year and a New York Times notable book of 2020. Um, Richard Russo wrote the review that was on the front cover of the New York Times. Um, it's out now in paperback. After I chose this book as one of the ones I wanted to talk about today, I remembered it's also one of the most frustrating books I've ever really tried to talk about. Um, the pleasures of it are so complex. Um, NPR's book critic Maureen Corrigan had the same dilemma and solved it head on by directly addressing that in her review. So I'm just going to read you the review because it makes a lot more sense than whatever I'd be stumbling around on. Um, I've been reading and reviewing Sue Miller's novels ever since her debut, The Good Mother became an instant bestseller in 1986. And for all those many years, I've been frustrated by Miller because her novels are so hard to do justice to in a, re in a review, especially on radio. As you know, radio is about storytelling and Miller's stories in summary often tend to sound contrived, cheesy even. For instance, her latest novel, Monogamy is about a couple living in Cambridge, Mass, who've been happily married nearly 30 years. Her, sudden, her husband suddenly dies, and the, the wife discovers he'd been having an affair. Her known world is thus doubly shattered. Melodramatic, right? Yet, in Miller's hands, this piece of artifice becomes transformed into felt life. She's one of our most emotionally profound and nuanced writers. Um, this was really one of my favorite books from last year, and... Um, you should take a look at it. Um, Harper sells books to our bookstores in three seasons, winter, summer, and fall. For, for every season, uh, the entire company has a chance to pick a favorite book, um, one we all love. And everybody who wants to, we encourage everyone um, to, get to, to, get to get out there and vote. And Mary Jane was the one that we all voted for for this summer. Um, it's a smart, sweethearted comic coming of age story set in 1970s Baltimore. 14 um, year old Mary Jane lives in a straight laced conservative home that feels more like the 1950s than the 1970s. When she lands a summer job as a nanny in a doctor's house, the teen's eyes are opened to a world she never imagined. Um, the doctor is a psychiatrist. He and his wife are messy, lefty, free spirits. Um, they're about to have secret house guests, a drug addicted rock star getting sober and his beautiful celebrity wife. Um, over the course of the summer, Mary Jane introduces the household to the concept of crisply ironed clothes and a family dinner schedule while she has a front row seat to the world of liberal ideas, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Um, we've received a whole bunch of great, of terrific reviews from this. Um, one of my favorites was from Kevin Wilson, the author of no Nothing to See Here, who said, amongst other things, I dare you to find a more winning novel than Jessica Anya Blau's Mary Jane. And one from the New York Times, which said it was delightful. And um, she keeps it light, she keeps it moving, and she's got terrific visuals. You can already watch the movie in your mind with Lady Gaga as Sheba. And this is a witty, cleverly structured satire of cutthroat, male-dominated Silicon Valley culture and how two very different women navigate it. And driving the story, a hilarious premise, um, what if the COO of Google was really a Russian spy? Um, in 2006, Julia Lerner is in Moscow, a recent university graduate in computer science, when she's recruited by Russia's largest intelligence agency. By 2018, she's living in Silicon Valley as COO of Tangerine, one of America's most famous technology companies. In between her executive management style, where she makes offers to promising startups and then crushes them and copies their features if they refuse to sell, and her work in gender, gender uh, equality, which is to transfer the most annoying females off of her team, she then, she funnels intelligence back to the motherland. Um, Alice Liu is a first generation Chinese American stuck at the bottom of the totem pole at Tangerine. While doing a mundane server check, Alice discovers some unusual activity leading her to believe one, 
that tangerines vaunted privacy standards aren't as they're claimed, and two, the person abusing the privacy loophole just might be Julia herself. Um, as Alice gets closer to Julia, Russia is upping the asks, and Julia's questioning her own loyalties. Didn't she build up the company and her career on her own? And shouldn't she be able to protect her own American dream? Um, it's, it's smart, snarky, and funny on pretty much every, every page. Um, Wang has a wise-ass, light-handed touch that's just perfect for a summer beach read. And now for a completely different kind of Russian spy novel. Um, I'm sure you're, you're familiar with one of our favorite authors, Beatrice Williams. She's done events at the store for many of her books. Um, in her newest book that just came out yesterday, she takes on the early days of the Cold War in a compelling um, tale of spycraft, love, and family. In 1948, American diplomat Sasha Digby, his wife Iris, and their two children disappear from their London home. The sensational disappearance raises two possibilities. They've been killed by the KGB or they've defected to Moscow. Four years later, Ruth McAllister receives a postcard from the twin sister she hasn't seen since their catastrophic parting in Rome in the summer of 1940, when Iris fell desperately in love with a mysterious United States embassy official named Sasha Digby. Um, within days, Ruth is on her way to Moscow, posing as the wife of counterintelligent agent Sumner Fox in a plot to extract the Digbys from behind the Iron Curtain. Um, Fox has spent years watching, tracking both sisters. Ruth doesn't know if she can trust him, but she's desperate to do whatever she can do to rescue her sister. And their efforts are complicated by a ruthless KGB agent who suspects Digby of... Um, being a double agent. Beatrice Williams does lots of research on her own, but her books is a, a, a lots of, of um, research for this. And this novel is based on the real life Cambridge Five, the most notorious spy ring in British history. Um, it's wonderful historical fiction like written like a spy thriller. Um, Home Waters is a wonderful book. It's already been chosen by the New York Times as a new and notable and has received uh, lots of early reviews. Um, it's a family memoir and a celebration of the Montana wilderness by John McLean, whose father Norman wrote the classic A River Runs Through It. Structured on a meditation, as a meditation on fly fishing and life along the Blackfoot River, it's the story of four generations of McLeans who have fished, bonded, and drawn timeless lessons from its storied waters. We learn about the real lives of the McLean family that were fictionalized in the best-selling novella and the movie that was produced by Robert Redford and starred Brad Pitt. And we learn about the route the Native Americans from west of the Continental Divide took through the river valley to get to the buffalo hunting areas farther east, a route that Meriwether Lewis later followed and wrote about and which John retraces with the help of Lewis's notes. Gloria, you could just turn the page. This is just a map. Um, beautiful wooden engravings by Wellesley Bates appear throughout the book, and there is a 16-page color insert with beautiful photographs of the Montana setting and characters depicted in the book. Um, this book came out yesterday, and I think it's the perfect Father's Day gift, even if the father in your life doesn't fit. It's a um, fish. It's um, short, impressionistic, and is a beautifully written homage to family, fatherhood, and nature. It's a universal story about the power of place to shape families and beautifully portrays the ways our personal histories are linked to the places we come from, our own home waters. Sales reps read a lot of books, or a lot of partial books, 50 pages of this one, 100 pages of this other one. Um, there are always books that I start reading and I have to put down because something else comes along that I need to take a look at this. I used to read a lot of fantasy and I'm still drawn to it. When I saw this, I, I caught my interest big time. Um, I got about 50 pages into it and had to go on to something else, but I really liked what I read and, and wanted to read more. So on my vacation last month, I just sat down and just kept reading. Um, I ignored everything else I had to do and it was worth the wait. Um, 
There is a pronunciation guide at the end of the book that I wish I had known about when I started reading the book. You might want to take a look at it before you read the book, or you can just wait till you finish and see how, come you, how close you come to getting the names uh, pronounced correctly. Uh, inspired by Hungarian history and Jewish mythology, the story follows a young pagan woman who is handed over to be the king's next blood sacrifice and a one-eyed captain as they form an unlikely alliance to thwart a tyrant. Um, this is going to be out next week and it's getting really great reviews. It's perfect for the Naomi Novak or V.E. Schwab audiences. It was chosen as a um, Indies Introduced title for the summer. So a couple times a year, publishers send a group of books of independent booksellers, a big pile of manuscripts and um, by debut authors and let them start reading them and let them, let them choose eight to 10 usually, maybe a little more, maybe a little less depending um, of, of their favorite books. And so um, this is a really great bonus for the book. And this was one of the ones that, that was chosen. Uh, this story of a young Tokyo mother at a crossroads in her life is hilarious, snarky, insightful, and ultimately wise, and also very charming. Um, Mizuki lives in a beautiful Tokyo high rise, is married to a hardworking salary man, has two beautiful children and is at the end of her wits. Self-aware, she is frequently and comically ticked off, pondering if life with her distracted husband and the grind of caring for her children and a home is really what she wanted for her life. Sometimes she wonders whether it would be more fun to throw herself off the high rise balcony than spend another evening not talking to her family and hanging up laundry. Then one rainy night, she meets Kiyoshi, a successful restaurateur. In him, she rediscovers freedom, friendship, and the pulse of the city she's always loved. But the further she falls into their relationship, the clearer it becomes that she's living two lives. And in the end, she can only choose one. This is not a novel about blowing up your life. The, the pleasure of the journey is watching the clear-eyed Mizuki um, come to understand what she cherishes. Bonus points for the fully realized characterizations, including Tokyo itself, which comes vividly to life. Um, when you read it, you're going to want to take a trip to, to Tokyo. The author lives in London, but she grew up in Tokyo. Um, this is one of the sales rep's most loved books on the Harper Fall list. We are comparing it to novels by Sally Rooney, and one of the one of the reps um, mentioned that Lily King was a, was a good comp. It's not coming out till September, but it's worth the wait. And the next time Lori asks me what she should read, this is going to be what I hand her. So this is a young adult novel, but it's a great fantasy for adults as well. I think. Um, Victoria Aveyard's debut series, Red Queen, has sold over 3 million copies since its release in winter 2015, and each novel in the series debuted at number one on the New York Times bestseller list. Victoria just announced that a television series based on it is being developed from Peacock, the NBC streaming service. I was, still am, um, a big fan of the Red Queen series and was really excited about this new series. A couple months ago, Victoria did a Zoom meet and greet with, um, for some booksellers, and she talked about her inspiration for this book, which, was, uh, which were the Tolkien books, and that she'd always wanted to write uh, a quest novel only with a kick-ass girl as the heroine instead of hobbits. Um, this isn't Tolkien, but Aviard has accomplished what she set out to do, a great young heroine accompanied by a band of unlikely companions who take a stand against a vicious opponent who's determined to burn all the kingdoms down with the help of a completely creepy army. Um, there's lots of action, lots of betrayals, and of course, lots of heart. Um, Realm Breakers received some great reviews and it debuted at the number one spot on the New York Times list. There's two more books on the list. Um, one of the wonderful things about being a sales rep is that I get to read manuscripts for books that are coming out in the future. So I get to read the second one of this 
soon, probably by the end of the year, I won't have to wait till next year, but the third one won't be out till 2023. So I'm gonna have quite a wait for that. And every time I see the cover of this book, I can't stop singing the song. Um, you'll be happy to know I'm not gonna sing it for you, um, but I'm hoping that for some of you, just the sight of it will be enough to get that earworm implanted in your head as well. Um, 2021 is the 50 year anniversary of the Cat Stevens song, Peace Train. And we brought out a gorgeous picture book with art by Massachusetts illustrator, Peter H. Reynolds. It came out May 11th, and debuted on the New York Times bestseller list at number one. There's pictures of this too, Lori. I think two pages. Um, maybe some of you are old enough to remember the song from 50 years ago, but if not, it's a staple on classic rock stations and you can find loads of versions of it, on, of him playing it on YouTube. I admit that I am a fan girl and I've looked at many of them and my favorite is the 1976 um, one, but I'm happy to talk about it. This is a great book for all the fans, but it's really a brightly colored children's book. And the lyrics talk about living in peace and harmony, which is a really good thing for all of us to think about these days. Cat Stevens is still around, although he lives in Dubai, so there's not a lot of sightings of him, but he was on the Today Show with Hoda and Jenna and um, speaking about the book and its theme of peace and understanding and that, we only have one world and this is it. Um, so we need to take better care of it and each other. Um, as an added bonus, he sings a song. So, and if you missed it, I'm sure you can go to the, uh, to the Today Show website and search it out. And that's it. Thank you very much. Great, thank you, Karen. That was fabulous. Um, I have a lot of books I want to read, and yes, you know I want to read that one, so you can get that to me anytime you want. I will. As soon as I get it, it'll be, as soon as it's in my hands, it will be mailed off to your hands. Excellent, excellent. So um, while we're waiting on if there's any questions, um, I, I've got a couple things that I, I, I mean, I've known you for a very long time, and I, I'm, I'm blessed to know you not only as a workmate, but as a friend now. Um, after many years. Um, but I think, you know, I'd love for you to share the story of why you became a sales rep, because clearly you love books. I mean, that's, that's obvious. But, you know, selling books to different accounts, you know, is a whole different thing. And, and, and for, for all of you to know, I mean, Karen does maybe a little bit of a smaller version of what she did here, but with more books, on a regular basis to us, you know, three times a year when she comes to, to talk about, um, you know, the books that HarperCollins has coming out. So you want to share a little bit about what made you go into this line of work? Sure. sure. So a few years ago, <laughs> there was a, I, there was actually a, 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 it was a Connecticut chain called Caldor. And they had real actual book and record department, and real actual departments where there were managers that, that ran the departments and people that just worked, pretty much just worked, you know, they could get shipped off to other places. But pretty much that was what they did was work in the book department. And I was lucky enough to be a manager for a lot when I was in college. I wasn't a manager when I was in college, but I worked there. And then when I got out of college, I worked there for a while. And then I just kept going, I love this job. I love being with the books. I love to do this. And then I kind of decided maybe I should do something. Maybe I should take the next step. And we used to see sales reps. We, the sales reps would come in and sell us new books, talk to us about the new books, show us what was new and all the. And I thought every time I saw one of them, I thought that just looks like the best job ever. And so I started, you know, talking to them and saying, you know, I think I'd really like to do this. I would really like to do this as, as my job. And one of them finally said, hey, we have, we have an opening. Do you want to, do you want to talk to someone about it? Do you want to think about it? And I like, and I jumped at the chance and I'm happy every day. And it's, I'm, I feel so lucky to have spent my whole career in a, in a job that I love that most, mm. almost every single day I wake up in the morning and think, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to RJ Julia. Um, you know, this is, this is a wonderful thing. So it's, and I don't know that everybody gets to do that, but I have, I've been really lucky. 
And I love and, books, as you can tell. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and, and yes, to love a job that you're spending, you know, literally submersing yourself in uh, morning, noon, and night. And it's very lucky. So right, right. You know, and we, we're all benefiting from, from your happiness. So good. good. Um, <laughs> so there is a, and one of our attendees that would like, um, can, you, can you just tell us a little bit more about the nonfiction titles? Um, that you talked about? Uh, home Waters? Yes. Like, like what, what, do you, what else do you need to know about it? Um, I, I mean, I... So it's... It's I'm, not specific. It just says they'd like to talk more about the nonfiction title. So... Okay. She, sorry, I can clarify. She oh, missed thanks. the... She thought initially there were no nonfiction on the list, so she would just love to hear more about it. Uh, oh, uh, gotcha. Okay. So it is, it's a book by... Um, Norman McLean, is it Norman McLean's son? So he wrote the book, um, A River Runs Through It, which was out, mm. which was a huge bestseller. I can't remember, long, a long time ago, which was long a gorgeous, ago. gorgeous book about fishing, about fly fishing. He's a fly fisherman. So that's, that's what he wants to do. Um, that's what he did. And he, he you know, caught the perfect fish, I think. I can't remember, it was such a long time ago. But even, but I read it and I'm not a fisher person at all. And it's, it's, it's probably, maybe it's probably geared more toward the male audience, but I don't think that it has to be. And this new book is, um, is a book by his son. And where's my little note? I will tell you that I do not read all of these books and I didn't read this entire book. So if you have like a hard question, I'm gonna have to get back to you. There it is. <laughs> yeah. um, but it is about, it is about, fly fishing on the river out in Montana, um, which I also think was probably one of my attractions for it because I, I Montana, I'm a, I'm a New Englander, I'm never gonna move anywhere, but Montana just always seems kind of magical. Probably big not, sky. but- um, right? Big sky, isn't that what they call yeah. Montana? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It just seems like the kind of place that you might wanna go. But really what he's talking about is that home is wherever you want it to be. And this is, your family is home and, and where you feel like home, it, it, that's where it is. Hmm. So sorry, I'm not being very helpful to you, Emma. No, that's great. That's, <laughs> that's, I actually think I, I might want to read. That came out yesterday, right? Yeah, it just yeah. came out yesterday. And plus it's beautiful. I mean, it looks really pretty. So it's like really, I feel like it's, you know, it's just the kind of book that you can sit down and open up and just and just feel like it's a special thing. Hmm. Um, any any book that you want to gush about right now that's maybe out, you know, already or anything that you want to give a two thumbs up or more on? You mean one that I talked about or one that I... Just a new one. Yeah, different. anything. Um, I know I'm putting you on the spot because people ask us all the time, what's the best book you've read so far lately? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> it always gets... So I know I'm putting you on the spot. Well, you know, you are because it's, you're always like reading books. You know, I'm, right. I've already, I'm almost reading books for January. You know, yeah. I mean, in another yeah. couple of weeks, I'm going to start reading books about January. So I can't yeah. even remember what else came out like yesterday or like the last, the last few weeks. Um, I am really looking forward to Fault Lines coming out. And there's a book um, by Josh Ritter. Do you know who he is? The, the uh, musician? Yeah. Um, he has a book called The great glorious goddamn of it all that's um that's going to be a real lot of fun that's going to be out in the fall as well so right. that's not helpful to you um <laughs> geez Lori, nothing well like the best thing the best here. thing the best thing for 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 our attendees to do is to come into the store and let us recommend <laughs> what we're gushing about so <laughs> you know that's or go on go on the you know our website and go to staff suggestions because you know, the, those are the books that we gush about, which come from Karen and our other reps. So <laughs> um, another question that's come up is, um, and I'm not sure if you know this or not, but does HarperCollins ever hire retired teachers to design lessons for publishing? Do you know anything about that? I don't think so. Like lesson plans? Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. I don't yeah. think that's anything we would do, although it sounds kind of intriguing. Mm, it does. Maybe put together, whoever asked that question, maybe put together a proposal. Yeah. And send it to HarperCollins. Yeah. And see, maybe maybe you'll create a whole new division. Right, right. 
Um, well, I mean, I, I think that that's, that's, I mean, you talked about some great books, Karen, and we're just, you know, so lucky. Thank you for, for joining us. I know you always love talking books and you'd rather do it in person. <laughs> um, I can't wait to see you soon. So um, I really appreciate you taking time to, to talk to our great customers about all the books that you've been reading or some of all the books, because I know you read <laughs> a lot more than this, uh, but some of your favorites and, um, you know, putting together this slideshow is just really, really impressive. Thank you very much for doing that. And yeah, I thank you everybody for joining us. Um, I know Abby's gonna, gonna sign us off now and um, Karen, I will talk to you soon. Okay, thanks a lot guys. All right, well, thank you all for joining us. Uh, the links to purchase books today are in the chat. Again, just to recap, if you purchase three or more from the list, you will receive 15% off with the code REPNIGHT15. And then each book purchase gets a raffle raffle ticket to receive a potentially receive a galley of Karen's choice. So uh, I hope that everyone's interest has been piqued by these wonderful books. And thank you, Karen, for joining us and Laurie for joining us as well. It's been a great, great event. So, yes, thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody.